Good Monday evening, everybody, live and direct from House Onik. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with another edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. If you've never tuned in before, this is our opportunity to give you a little bit more information as to what's going on with the weather forecast and to keep you updated as to what's coming your way in the course of the next couple of days. We'll show you again the possibility of severe weather off and on close to the area, but not really seeing too much of any other major concerns for the Mid-South. And as we go throughout the next couple of days, some sunny skies and some fairly mild conditions. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Time as we record this, as you notice in the time stamp just below our logo up above my head, is just after about 6 o'clock in the evening. And as of right now, traffic from rush hour appears to be slowly ebbing its way, everybody heading on home, so no major problems being seen at this time where it comes to anything in the way of major backups. The usual backups around the flyover and down toward Highway 22, I-22, I Highway 78 around Tuggle Road, Shelby Drive on Lamar Avenue, south and eastward. Really not seeing too much of anything else. It's about the same thing as per usual on a Monday, and everything else appears to be moving along pretty nicely so far. Storm system making its way back toward the southeastern part of the country, and that is going to be making its way up and away from us. Now, this storm system that you're looking at right here, as it moved its way on out of the area last night, did a very good job of creating what's called a wake low. It's a storm system that follows in the wake of an area of high pressure, and that was responsible for all of the very windy conditions that we saw across the Mid-South last night, po post about News Channel 3 at 10 into around 1 o'clock in the morning. Not too much to report in the way of damage. Some debris on the roadways reported this morning, but other than that, not really looking at too much of anything out there. Visible satellite picture as skies get a little darker toward about sunset tonight. A few clouds drifting on through. Should be looking at some sunny skies coming our way into tomorrow. And as of right now, it looks like most if not all of the rainfall has gone. West Tennessee picking up a few light scattered showers, and that's about the bulk of anything we've got out there for early this evening. If you'd like to see more about what's going on in the Mid-South on a local level, all you have to do is drop by WREG.com, and you can take a look at our interactive radar page. That's at WREG.com slash weather. Great opportunity to get more information about what's going on. This is what it looks like. Again, focused in on Shelby County and the Memphis metro area, so if you have any plans to travel, this would be be a good place to get tons of information available as to what's going on out there zoomed in from across the mid-south area and also again seeing a uh, little if anything right now in the way of problems with lightning we'll go ahead and put the lightning marker on there and show you that so far we don't have too much of anything going on uh, in the way of lightning across the mid-south so definitely good news uh, on that so not really seeing too much of any other major problems out there for this evening storm system again making its way on out of the picture heading up toward the upper midwest the mid mississippi valley and a cold front going to be trying to make its way on down through about the area close to the Midwest. Not really going to be having too much of an effect on our uh, weather situation as it stands. Things actually should be pretty quiet and are pretty quiet right now. National Weather Service in Memphis, the yellowish beige color that you see on there covering the entire area, that is just indicative of a special weather statement or a hazardous weather outlook or a forecast being issued. Nothing severe taking place at this time. No watch or warnings, and it looks like the severe threat at this time is pretty much over with. We do have, again, a marginal threat in the dark green shaded areas taking a look into the area around portions of the Midwest and back toward the north and to the east, but otherwise not that much going on at this time in the way of severe activity. Now tomorrow we're going to be kind of like sandwiched in between a couple of storm systems, one out toward the Arklatex area north and west of us, and the other one down toward the south and east, down toward the Gulf Coast, Florida Panhandle, New Orleans, up to around Mobile, uh, the update just came in from the Storm Prediction Center right there and showing again uh, the main possibility of problems on either side of the Mid-South, but not really that much going on directly where we are. So good news at that time. The, the light green shaded color that you, see, that you see on the map there, that's just a general uh, possibility of thunderstorms. The severe threat picks up when you get into the dark green polygon and from there into the yellow polygon and it gets higher and higher from there. Light green just indicates the possibility of just some thunderstorms 
out there. So good news on that. Let's take a look and see what's going on into the next about 24 to 36 hours as we take a look at tomorrow. That storm system lifts its way back up to the north and to the east of us and heads toward the Great Lakes and we'll be taking the rainfall chances with it. That weak cold front tries to make its way into Missouri and Illinois and doesn't really do too well. New storm system coming in from out west. That's going to be the main chance of severe weather back out toward the front range of the Rockies. Could be some snow out that direction from northern Texas all the way up into Wyoming and Montana. Heading into Tuesday uh, night, Wednesday morning very early, those showers and thunderstorms return to the forecast. And by daybreak and rush hour on Wednesday, we could be looking at the possibility of even more thunderstorms coming back our direction with this new storm system. And that thing could linger into around areas of Thursday afternoon and evening. So the storm system that's going to be coming on through may have a little bit less punch for us, but if you're going out west Oklahoma City uh, into around the area of Kansas City down toward Dallas, that could be a little bit more of a problem uh, in those locations for right now as that storm system lifts its way out of the area and heads away from us in the next couple of days. Uh, currently, again, seeing not much in the way of any problems on the extended forecast either. From the next couple of days, Storm Prediction Center showing things are relatively quiet and little, if anything, going to be, again, heading our direction for this period of time. Let's take a look at the forecast into tonight, give you an idea as to what's going on. By the way, if you want to check out the forecast at any point in time, it's right down here on the blue section, and then all the social media that I interact with through the station down here in the red bar on social media. And, of course, you can catch the icons right up there on top. And don't forget, you can check out wreg.com slash weather for the latest weather information there. Currently into tonight, we should be looking again at low temperatures dropping into the 60s, maybe a few upper 50s around, say, Union City, but a very mild evening coming up tonight. Showers and thunderstorms peeling off and away from us. High temperatures tomorrow should be back around 80 in the metro, upper 70s to lower 80s across much of the rest of the Mid-South area. And chances of anything involving rainfall coming our direction don't seem to be a problem. Matter of fact, as we get into the rest of the day tomorrow, should be looking at mostly clear skies, a few clouds here and there, but that's really going to be about it. Now by Wednesday, we see again the high temperatures going back into the upper 60s to the lower 70s, and there will be chances of showers across portions of the area. Doesn't look like a lot of rainfall, but once again, wet roadways and mid-south driving, that's always an adventure, and that's putting it lightly, so be prepared for some of that coming up Wednesday. Getting into Wednesday evening, low temperatures will be back into the mid to upper 40s, a little bit cooler as some of that cool air makes its way into parts of the mid south. Rainfall chances mainly in the eastern parts of the viewing area, and that should be leaving the mid-south as we go toward very early Thursday morning. Thursday's high temperatures much cooler back in the lower 60s, so a little bit of a change on that. Winds will be coming in out of the northwest, and will be pretty breezy, 10 to 20 miles per hour throughout the day on Thursday. So expect a breezy and cool day, but at least we'll get some sunshine out of it. Clouds back toward Union City, Jackson, and the Tennessee River. Most of the rest of everything leaving the area. And let's go ahead and wrap it up and head toward Friday. High temperatures, pleasant but cool, a little bit below normal for this time of the year, back into the mid-60s, so very much on the pleasant side out there as we get into the course of the next few days. Now, rainfall chances at this time, again, what you're looking at there, the red and green bars. Red is thunder, green is rainfall, and it looks like everything's basically over with for later on tonight, so there's little, if anything, going on for now. Let's go ahead and go a little farther into the forecast as we approach Wednesday at midnight. Rain chances and thunderstorms begin by about midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, and then ramp upwards as we head toward dawn patrol on Wednesday morning. So if you have any outdoor plans, that is going to be, again, where we see uh, the potential of some stronger weather out across the Mid-South. Severe weather so far staying away from us. Let's hope it stays that way. We'll keep you updated on that throughout the course of the next couple of days as things go. Now, very important, uh, if something to participate in, something for your kids uh, to participate in, especially at school, their teachers, their administrators, their principals, things like that. If you know where to go to when severe weather hits, that's very important. If you can help other people understand just how vitally important that is, here's your opportunity to do so. Follow the hashtag SafePlaceSelfie on Twitter and on other forms of social media. Where's your safe place to go to when it comes to severe weather purposes? Let other people know about that, and you can help out the National Weather Service, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the W 
WRN that you see there on the graphic. That's Weather Ready Nation. It's a program from the National Weather Service to get businesses, places of worship, universities and colleges, civic and county and state organization, government area, buildings and procedures all lumped together to get ready for severe weather and ready to go for anything else it might hit. Tsunamis on the coast, earthquakes in various locations. As long as people know what needs to be done beforehand, that can cut down on panic time and get everybody else that much more safe. So what you need to do, take a place, take a picture of yourself on your cell phone with, again, your you in your safe place. Your kids at school can do this, uh, at your work, at your place of worship, anything like that. Post it on social media starting today. It goes from the April 3rd through the 6th. It's no special week where it comes to learning about severe weather, but it's your opportunity to help people learn a little bit more about what's going on when it comes to severe weather safety. This is vitally important because the more you have to think about where you need to go to when it comes to severe weather, the less time you have to actually get in that safe place and stay safe. That's, again, a good opportunity to practice good weather practices ahead of time, learning what to do before things hit. That's a very good idea, so something to think about there. We'll have updates on safe places selfie throughout the rest of the week and if you've got them share them with me again on these social media networks up here we'll be glad to share them along to everybody else and also on weather overtime so we'd love to see what you're sharing out there give me an idea as to what exactly it is that you are doing out there to keep you your kids your place of worship your business your organization safe by learning what needs to be done when it comes to severe weather we'll have updates on the forecast including the possibility of more thunderstorms out there coming up throughout the course of the next couple of days so keep it tuned to news channel 3 for more information on that. Live and direct from House Onyx, I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned for much more coming up on News Channel 3 tonight. Your complete forecast at 10 with Jim Jaggers. And of course, Todd Demers, your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning. And I'll have more details on the forecast available at slash weather and on social media. Thanks for joining us for our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime for Monday evening.